על אקדמיה פוסט קורונה. Uh, our colleague from the Middle East Technical University, she's the Vice Dean from okay. Turkey. Thank you for including me. Uh, it looks like, you know, in very different countries, we are facing some similar issues. And, you know, since uh, this pandemic, uh, you know, started, I've been uh, basically uh, noticing uh, several things and I'm going to talk uh, about them. And, uh, is I mean um, for example there is a you know, there's a face uh, Facebook page that's a pandemic pedagogy pa page um, so there people are all these educators are sharing their uh, this problems that they're experiencing which being you know all of a sudden uh, means that this is just uh, uh, some scholars as some scholars call it this is just more emergency remote uh, teaching so we have to first, I think, remember that because if we don't, uh, you know, that kind of uh, could lead us somewhere else that we may not want to go yet because I still find value, a lot of value in face-to-face -face, uh, education. Yes, definitely it should be supported by technology, but, you know, I don't think uh, it would be a good idea to give up on uh, uh, assuming, oh, okay, you know, so this is the starting point. Now we are switching to online, which I think is a very problematic approach. Um, and there are some courses you couldn't uh, take uh, online as uh, uh, the uh, yes. scholar from Jordan stated. Uh, a lot of our faculty members uh, uh, are experiencing this in different areas uh, and in the field of education too, because we provide teacher education and, um, and they have to do practice. And uh, so fourth grade students uh, who are very concerned, are still concerned and when we did a survey uh, to identify their concerns, so graduation was a big concern for them and uh, how they were going to be graded on their practice courses uh, for teaching. So those were some things that came up uh, in terms of, uh, you know, educational uh, issues. So um, definitely this should not be interpreted as a way to take uh, education entirely online. I think that is not something the world is ready for, particularly due to the uh, access issue. I mean, if we consider the digital divide, uh, where 50%, only 50% of the people in the world have access to internet, um, you know, this is one major, major issue. And, you know, uh, in our university, we have some students who are now living in uh, their uh, families' homes in villages where they cannot get internet. So, uh, you know, there is a big access issue uh, that basically uh, showed itself uh, through this pandemic. And this is something that we uh, have to, as a, a community of education, have to address, I think. Another thing, uh, for the Turkish context at least, uh, that uh, this pandemic showed us is that crisis management is not something that we are good at and that um, this is something we have to pay attention to, uh, both in practice and in terms of research as well. You know, crisis management, decision-making in uh, crisis situations, um, I think these are things uh, that we have to uh, start uh, working on and working on them soon because uh, it looks like, you know, we are now really in the 21st century. Um, uh, specific to Turkey, of course, um, we have a um, higher education council and we are a very centralized, we have a very centralized education system. So sometimes that means we have to deal with uh, difficulties that come from that a lot of that and that means that universities cannot necessarily you know uh, make decisions on their own and they have to you know uh, basically do how, you know what's told by the higher education council uh, so we cannot just decide on our own that we are going to take this kind of an approach or another kind of an approach. 
you know, there are mandates that come from the Higher Education Council and then we have to take them and adapt them to our university's realities and go from there. So, uh, you know, for, uh, uh, you know, our reality is this, that unfortunately uh, we are not able to have as much impact on the policy as we would like, even if we do the research and, you know, show uh, the problems. So, and, you know, the pandemic was also, uh, has also been showing us, you know, that, you know, science has to be the guide. Uh, if not, then we are going to, uh, probably not going to be able to effectively deal with the pandemic. You know, uh, if we ignore the, the scientists' uh, suggestions, and sometimes that happens, that would give, get us into big trouble. So once again, the pandemic reminds us of the importance of science and scientific research. And uh, maybe it will also uh, be a wake-up call for us to... Uh, instead of focusing on quantity, uh, like our friend mentioned from Palestine, instead of focusing on quantity in terms of uh, publications and research, uh, you know, getting at the real work of research and take the time to uh, come up with uh, high quality work, actually. So that was the other thing. These are just some thoughts uh, that uh, I've been uh, kind of considering and uh, that's basically all um, for now from me. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Raja Jiris from Tel Aviv University. So Raja, are you with us? So I'm an assistant professor at Tel Aviv University. I am working in the area of artificial intelligence. And I will talk a bit about how we treated the, the recent situation at Tel Aviv University and other universities here. So mainly all the teaching here uh, moved to online. So we do all teaching uh, now uh, through Zoom or uh, through uh, other online teaching. And one of the main concerns here uh, by faculty members is how to help uh, minorities uh, that don't have a good uh, internet connection. Many times in rural areas, the internet connection is not as good as in the main cities. So this is a challenge that we are trying to think of. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is to try to think how a university can have an impact, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Walid mentioned, how it can uh, ha have an impact beyond publishing papers. So uh, uh, the president of university opened the Slack uh, channel where uh, people from different disciplines can uh, communicate and try to write um, some uh, documents that can be sent to decision makers in a way that will help to uh, change the decision making, to understand better the coronavirus. One of the challenges in corona is that there are lots of wrong information going around in, on the web. So if uh, researchers can gather all the information and then summarize it in a short document, which is intelligible, it can help decision makers to make better decisions because it will filter out many misinformation that is going out there. And so there are some letters that are sent out to decision makers some uh, studies that try to see how, uh, what is the impact in the social level, in the medical level, uh, in stress, inside families. Uh, so we know that, that uh, now th th there is the economic problem that is beyond the coronavirus and might be higher than the pandemic itself. So the question is how you can treat the day after also. One last thing that is done here, uh, w one of the other institutes here made a questionnaire that they sent to people and over 100,000 people answered this questionnaire and using techniques of big data, they were able to predict where the next infection will happen. So they had a questionnaire that they sent to people, people filled the questionnaire 
So the question he asks how people feel, uh, how uh, are the neighbors, so on and so forth. And it helps to predict where the next break happens without doing any medical test, without anything, just asking anonymously people where they live and how they feel. And I think this is something that can be very helpful, especially in places where you don't have lots of medical tests to be able to predict where is the next place that the pandemic will strike. So this yeah. is my perspective and thank you very much. Uh, I would like to give the word now for a friend of us from Serbia, Dragon. Are you there? I would like to uh, express my gratitude to participating at this uh, meeting and to give a strong support for this initiative. Uh, the same as in, uh, in the other countries, uh, COVID-19 has challenged not only educational process, but also culture, economy, and sociopolitical life in Serbia. At the Faculty of Contemporary Arts, uh, the first question we, we have asked ourselves uh, was how to continue our educational activities. What flat platform we can use, how to keep our students engaged, how to adapt to new circumstances. Mm -hmm. And um, as soon as we had started to sketch our response to new challenge, uh, the new challenges arose, uh, the major question were how to keep a cultural life alive. Uh, what uh, are our new responsibilities? Uh, what we can do to contribute, uh, contribute to, to the society? Uh, current social circumstances force our need uh, not just to rethink sustainable economical development, but also to reimagine a new cultural space that can encourage community members to overcome old prejudice and to find their vision to a better world. The post-COVID world will not be the same, so we have to act to define our future. Uh, one, of our acting, uh, one of our acting mechanisms is to motivate researchers, students, and public to come together to recreate, uh, reconstruct, and to reform cultural space to compassion and mutual understanding schools, public institutions, and media by supporting development of competitive individuals have marginalized an idea of social context based on compassionate connectivity. Lack of vision how to create a better society as much as a lack of beliefs in ability to make changes keep community members out of struggle, struggle for more influential position and at the end for more democratic society. So we would like to see art as a powerful force able to bring visions to local community members and to initiate their involvement in social reconstruction. Different art projects can inspire local community members to build a stronger connections between them and help them to define visions of a better society. Cooperation in artistic work can get their community members and inspire them to involve in a political decision-making process. It also can improve their ability to state a program of social development in a more democratic, more inclusive manner. Local initiatives, can be the driving force in creating translocal movements. And uh, we like to consider the role of art and higher education institutions as a crucial in initiating social actions, uh, which are able to reconstruct cultural context on a global level to change uh, perception of development and to inspire people to be rather cooperative than competitive. Art and education should motivate people to reconstruct the society so it can better serve the uh, interests of all groups and to create a culture which uh, not only merge different needs but also support its understanding. 
our human, humanistic task is to develop education for mutual understanding and support. These days, many people are afraid, uh, but uh, some kind of consolation in this uh, and similar situation in the future uh, can be uh, uh, an idea of a global community uh, that uh, leaves no one alone and unprotected. We have to keep in mind that uh, we all share this world as well as we share our fears, challenges and uh, our dreams. And thank you for, for your attention. I was looking around and I saw this initiative at the, the Central European University in Budapest and they're very active there and they are planning to do something on alternative academia. So I, I, I allowed myself to invite a PhD uh, researcher, a student uh, from, their, from Sweden, but uh, now he is at the university to share with us briefly. I need to be tight and ask him to just go for one minute, one minute and a half and max. Thanks, Sami, for the invitation and giving us this opportunity. So um, this alternative academia idea started with, um, with some of our dis, um, dissatisfaction with certain aspects of academia. Um, started talking with my colleague, Jacqueline Dufalo, which is who is also present here. And uh, so what are these dissatisfactions such as like, we, we talked about this publish and perish mentality. You know, there are the issues with grants and certain inequalities within academia and um, but what we do or what we hear is mostly complaints, right? The critics. So we wanted to, to, to focus on a bit more constructive than talking about, you know, how can we realize um, or what first, like how do we envision the future of academ academia? And then how can we realize it, right? How can we overcome like these issues? What are our capacities? For instance, um, we're talking about um, the measurement of, of success based on, on publications, but if not that, then you know what can we do? Or entrance to the job market, it's highly competitive, but then uh, how, how can we overcome that? Does it mean that we need to accept like less PhD students and you know reduce the numbers? It all comes you know with its baggage, and so we need to talk. Uh, we wanted to you know talk about this like constructive uh, issues and our capacities. But of course, these are all still like working within the, the hegemonic structure. And all, we can also think about right, uh, out of the box. For instance, uh, in countries like Turkey and Hungary, where there is governmental pressure, we've seen really uh, cool initiatives such as like street academies and open universities, you know, where um, where people, the, the, the scholars were teaching basically on the street. So there was more uh, interaction with the community and, uh, and, and it was a way to overcome the government's pressure. And why not, you know, um, think about it or like build on it. Um, so basically, yeah, everyone has a different issues and vi vision uh, for the future of the academia. And we thought the first step, the initial step should come together and talk about it and then talk about how we can realize it, um, realize them. But then this, this talk started before all the corona pandemic. And now actually uh, the, the, the pandemic revealed more problems uh, within academia or it made certain things worse, but also it, it, revealed it, it revealed it. Now we can see it more clearly. And it already started a talk about the, um, the future of academia. So we want to jump on this talk and, uh, and not only talk about, you know, technical aspects such as, you know, how to teach online, but uh, more fundamental issues uh, and use this opportunity to, to build like a less hierarchical and less exploitative uh, academia that also gives more to the community.